Hello, my name is Allison, and I'm a chemist at UNC, and I work in organic solar cells on device design. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that means. Um, so I think we can all agree that fossil fuels suck and that we're running out of them, but sunlight is a pretty friendly and really abundant um, alternative for renewable energy. So organic solar cells or carbon-based solar cells are cheaper, lighter, and more flexible than their silicon um, alternative, but they aren't as efficient at converting sunlight to power, which is kind of the whole point, and that's why we're working on them. Um, one of the main components of an organic solar cell is the polymer, or a long chain of mostly carbon atoms who, that absorbs the sunlight for converting to electricity. But that polymer only absorbs a very particular subset of the available sunlight, say mostly red light, while the rest of it is basically wasted. So if we could find a complementary polymer to absorb some of that leftover sunlight, say the green light, and add it to the solar cell, then the increase in sunlight absorbed should yield an increase in power output. As soon as you add that second polymer into the solar cell, it changes everything though, because it starts to interact with the original polymer. Um, and my project is focused on studying and understanding those interactions. Which of those interactions are good, which are bad, and what about the structure of the polymer leads to those interactions? Because if we can answer those questions, then we can use that knowledge to design better polymers that will work well together to absorb a broader amount of sunlight and increase the efficiency of organic solar cells.